Folks, welcome. Um, thank you, Commissioner Carr. Um, as you can see, I'm just trying to move things along a little bit because, um, you know, we want to get a little bit going faster here. Um, we're really thrilled that the government reopened. I had nothing to do with it, but we're thrilled that it reopened because now we have some government speakers that we really want to hear from. Um, the next speaker um, today is Michael Kratzios, and Michael Kratzios is, um, we put this together in the last couple of days with the staff, and we're so deeply appreciative of all the work that they did to make this happen. Um, D Michael is Deputy Assistant to the President for Technology Policy at the White House. Um, prior to the White House, he worked in San Francisco, in San Francisco working for Thiel Capital, advising um, and investing in and startup companies and, and innovative companies. So um, we are thrilled to have him on, on short notice and um, I can't thank him enough for, for coming. Michael. Thank you so much. I'm glad to be here. It's, uh, it's great the government was able to reopen and we're uh, able to share some of the things that uh, we've been up to. But uh, I wanted to begin by um, thanking the Internet Education Foundation for inviting me to speak. I really appreciate the opportunity. Um, and I'm very honored to, to be standing here in front of so many of you uh, uh, esteemed industry leaders as we, as we share our agenda. But I want to take a little bit of time to, to talk about what we've been working on over the past two years and, and spend a little bit of time also thinking about and, and discussing what our priorities are um, and what our tech agenda is for, for 2019. So the key thing is really that, that you know, since inauguration, one of our biggest priorities has been ensuring American leadership in emerging technologies, um, or what we like to call industries of the future. These are fields like artificial intelligence, advanced manufacturing, secure 5G, and quantum information sciences. The industries of the future hold the potential to fuel American prosperity, to dramatically improve the quality of life, and produce high-paying jobs for American workers. Nearly $8 trillion, or 38% of U.S. GDP, is linked to technology-intensive industries, which is the highest percentage of any major developed economy. Now, significant investments in industries of the future put America in a position to build upon the incredible innovations of the Internet age. Now, while other nations work to catch up with the U.S., this administration has been focused on maintaining our edge with bold strategies, key R&D investments, and a really relentless focus on reducing barriers to innovation. Job-killing regulations cause our best entrepreneurs and inventors to develop their next great innovations overseas. We're focused on fostering innovation here in the U.S. and protecting American dominance in these industries of the future. Now, as a president's principal science and technology policy shop, the Office of Science and Technology Policy, where I work, has led the administration's efforts on a number of key technology areas. So the first up is artificial intelligence. Now, as many of you know, the pace of AI development is rapid, and technologies like machine learning, autonomous systems, natural language processing continue to widen the scope of applications of AI. Now, this White House has taken a very forward-leaning approach to fortifying American leadership in artificial intelligence. The administration's most important strategic documents, things like the National Security Strategy, the National Defense Strategy, and the 2020 R&D Budget Priorities Memo, all are taking a targeted approach to advancing and incorporating artificial intelligence for the first time in history. Now, last year, we also formed the Select Committee on Artificial Intelligence to coordinate the wide range of federal R&D efforts, and federal agencies continue to issue guidance and regulatory updates to help advance our larger national R&D strategy. At the same time, the administration recognizes the irreplaceable value of the American worker and is working to protect our greatest strength by establishing a National Council for the American Worker to address workforce changes caused by AI and automation. Now, to that end, we are focused on advanced manufacturing, which includes both new manufacturing methods of production and new products enabled by innovation. And they have long been the engine of America's economic power and truly a pillar of our national security. Now, however, over the past few decades, U.S. companies have shifted to an invent here, manufacture there business model that China has aggressively used to their advantage. Now, in the face of intense global competition, President Trump unveiled a national strategic plan on advanced manufacturing that focuses on, one, defending the economy, two, expanding manufacturing employment, and three, ensuring a strong manufacturing defense industrial base in a resilient supply chain. 
This plan for our nation's advanced manufacturing puts us on the road to new technologies, new products, and entirely new industries, and most importantly, the jobs that go along with them. Now, American leadership in emerging wireless networks, specifically 5G, is also a critical, is critical to our global advantage. Being first at 4G added nearly $100 billion to the U.S. GDP in 2016, and we're working hard to maintain our advantage as we shift to and expand towards 5G. President Trump issued a memorandum directing the development of a national spectrum strategy to guide decisions regarding radio frequency waves that are the, really the fuel of wireless networks. He also signed a presidential memorandum making federal assets like cell towers available for commercial use. And he also signed an executive order streamlining the permitting process for siting wireless infrastructure on federal lands. The risk of losing American market leadership cannot be overstated. It's critical that we maintain our advantage, and the President has taken significant steps to promote industry's deployment of these next generation networks, with a keen focus on infrastructure, investment, and network security. Now, finally, I want to speak to the administration's historic efforts in quantum computing. In September, the White House convened over 100 quantum experts to discuss how our science-first quantum strategy to ensure American leadership, along with approaches to supporting quantum workforce development and the creation of an innovative quantum ecosystem. In December, as many of you may know, President Trump signed a bipartisan piece of legislation to accelerate the development of quantum computing. That would be the National Quantum Initiative Act. This, bring bill, this bill brings a coordinated approach to the federal government's support of quantum computing, allowing millions of dollars for R&D and calling for the creation of research centers across the country. Now, these efforts leverage the leadership position of the United States in quantum to expand our global edge in the face of truly increasing international competition. Now, as I wrap up, I want to take a minute or two to talk about something very near and dear to every American, and that's the administration's focus on consumer data privacy. As the United States leads the world in the industries of the future, we must ensure that our nation's privacy protections are up to date for this data-driven world. In September, the Department of Commerce solicited public input on a proposed approach to consumer privacy that is designed to bring high levels of protection for individuals while giving organizations legal clarity and the flexibility to innovate. In parallel, the National Institute for Standards and Technology is developing a voluntary privacy framework to help organize and manage risk. And the International Trade Administration is working to increase the harmonization of global regulatory standards. As these approaches develop further, we encourage all stakeholders and all of you in this room to continue to engage with us to ensure that we develop strong solutions to protecting consumer privacy while advancing prosperity and innovation. The administration has been working incredibly hard to promote American leadership in these industries of the future. I'm grateful to be part of this effort and proud of our team at the White House who have been working tirelessly to develop and promote science technology policy that is good for industry and good for America. I want to thank you again for this opportunity to speak uh, to this very distinguished group. Um, our R&D ecosystem relies very heavily on the contributions of the private sector, and our nation's entrepreneurs, unencumbered by government burdens, are the true source of our success. So I very much look forward to continuing to reduce regulatory barriers to innovation and fostering a business environment that allows entrepreneurs to create and test audacious ideas here in the U.S. Thanks again, and let's continue this journey together.